Jesus? Yes, yes. <laughs> Praise God. But Jesus was sinless, wasn't he? He, he made, committed no sin. And I think if we want to be like him, we have to endeavor to be that way too. We have to kill the old man, don't we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's hard to do sometimes. God understands. He's long-suffering. And I think that should be our desire to be like Jesus on earth. I think it will save us a lot of trouble. All the sin that we can avoid will make it a lot better for us. I think of a lot of things that save God, uh, being in church has saved me from. I'm happy, praise God, but I still have, like you say, it rains on the just and the unjust, but we don't have to worry about that because God created these bodies just for a space of time and we want to look forward to that new body that he is he is making for us i'm, I'm really really be happy when i get that <laughs> yeah. praise god nope. let's stand we want to go to the lord in prayer and uh do we have any special requests brother east step Yes, remember Tom Estep, he needs, needs prayer. And uh, I'd like to see him completely healed and, and back here with us. Right. Praise God. Brother Dickey? Yes, yes. Remember Brother Dickey and Body too? He, he needs healing. Brother uh, Lucas? Brother Bob Smuts was taken to St. Francis Hospital. He's had another stroke, so we need to pray for him that God would heal and touch his body. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Um, my mom had a second surgery on her foot Friday. Um, got four huge pins in her toes, and she's in a lot, a lot of pain. So yes. I remember her and my dad, too. Oh, that'll be really mm -hmm. hard for them. Yes, praise God. Remember uh, uh, Crystal, that's uh, Steve's wife, Crystal's grandma, and uh, she's only given uh, just a few weeks now to live. And, uh, of course, she has cancer, and uh, it's going to be hard and rough for her. So uh, let's, let's pray that God will be with the family and... Uh, uh, bring peace and understanding and, and uh, so that you know they won't be overcharged with uh, any loss that might might come praise god okay let's just all praise the lord and give him glory pray and ask god to be with us thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah, god, hallelujah. Jesus. we need you lord, lord thank, thank you lord you're the great god you're the almighty God, you can do all things. Oh, yes, Lord, oh, God. We have trusted in you, oh, Lord. Lord, we will always trust in you because you've never forsaken us, oh, Lord, God. Lord, God, hallelujah, we're thankful, Lord, of all of your benefits. We pray, oh, Lord, now for our loved ones, Lord, God, those out of the ark of safety, Lord, God. We pray, O oh Lord, Glory. for healing, <laughs> Lord of the body. <laughs> Lord Jesus, you've heard hallelujah, everyone. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, we hallelujah. believe, O oh God, oh, that you will, Lord, answer our prayer, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, be with us this day. Lord God, in our lesson, Lord God, teach us, O oh Lord, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, Lord God, we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Bless us, teacher, Lord, today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Praise God. You may be seated. Sister Singleton will be coming to receive the class offering. Praise God. Thank you. Brother Lucas is here. I'm glad he's back. He's gone under the weather for a while. And uh, it's not fun, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> I know, no, it's not. know how it feels. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he's, uh, his lesson is going to be a taken from the book of Peter. Uh, first, 
he has listed uh, the second chapter of First Peter, verses nine through eleven, and second he wants First Peter, chapter one, verses fourteen through sixteen. So we have it on the screen. Yep. Praise God. First Peter two. Nine through eleven. Let's all read then. Praise God. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal, royal priesthood, priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Praise God. And then First Peter 1. 14 through 16. Now, I just happen to have those three verses underlined in my Bible here. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And by the way, he's going to be talking about holiness, the call to holiness. So this verse is, is really good. It says, as obedient children... children not fashioning our, yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Praise God. It's thinking, you know, we say sometimes, Come as you are which that's true. You can't change yourself, can you? You just have to come as you are. But don't plan on staying as you are. <laughs> God intends to change you, don't he? He wants to Amen. want us to be born again. If you were born a certain way and said, I can't help it, well, then just be born again. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Lucas. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. I will tell you it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Because last Sunday, last Wednesday, and last Wednesday, I was sicker than a dog. And it's, it can't be that I'm getting older. It can't be that I'm getting older. I could not bounce back from that, and I was so sick. And I, I do want to thank God for touching my body. I laid in the bed. And I was in so much pain with my back and my legs and hacking and coughing. And, man, and I, I pray. I think I told Brother Mikey, step, we talked, and I, I, I said, Lord, just touch my body. I can't take this anymore. And uh, I woke up the next morning, and the pain was gone. I was still hacking and coughing, but the pain was gone. I thank God for touching my body. And I thank God that I missed church. Man, it killed me not to be in church. I don't know how people miss church four or five, six weeks and come back and everything's okay. Well, everything's not okay, but I missed two services and I feel like I need to pray through to the Holy Ghost again. You guys are awful quiet today. Come on, give me a break. All right, <clears throat> when, we look at our, when we look at our text, I, 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 our, class, our lesson today is the call to holiness. And... I was doing some digging and some commentaries about our lesson text. And it said this about uh, our verse in 1 Peter, the second chapter. It said, believers make up a holy priesthood. Now, under the law of Moses, royalty and priesthood were separated. But this barrier was overcome through Jesus Christ, enabling those who believe in him to participate in this union talks about verse 10, it says, describe the consequences of unfaithfulness to God. Verse 11, it talks about, it says, it is an appeal to abstain or to reject fleshly sins on the basis that believers are citizens of 
the kingdom of God and not the citizens of this earth. You know, you go someplace in the, in, out of this country and it's real plain and inevitable that you're not... We went to Mexico a few years back. It was plain and inevitable as soon as I walked through them gates on the other side, I was not in America no more. And everybody knew that I was an American. And I was immediately swarmed by about 50, 60 kids trying to sell me something. I wasn't 10 feet into Mexico. We didn't stay there all night, trust me. We got what we was going to get and got out. But it's plain inevitable that if we are Christians and we are called the children of God, well, we just shouldn't fit in down here. And as we talked about 1 Peter in the first chapter, verses 14 and through 16, said we should always exercise obedience in Christ and embrace a lifestyle of holiness. This call to holiness is just as prominent in the New Testament as it was in the Old Testament. Biblical concepts of holiness comprise purity, moral integrity, and encompasses a separation from all that is not that is not like Him, speaking of Jesus. The holiness that God wants in our lives focuses on our character, our spiritual and earthly character and ethics. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 7 says, For God hath not called us in unto uncleanliness, but to holiness. Am I loud? I'm a little loud, son. Because I thought I was a little loud to me. All right, how's that? Is that better? I probably don't need a mic, but I might for the end of class. All right. God is holy, and His holiness should be reflected. I'm sorry. His holiness is reflected in His nature, in His work, and should be in His people. The life that we lived in the world is put behind us. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad that when you was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, that the life that you had lived is now behind you? As you are filled with the Holy Ghost and you speak with other tongues, we become a new person, as Brother King was talking, in Christ. When we first come to the Lord, we learn a new way of life striving to reflect the character of the Lord. The Holy Ghost that dwells within us motivates us to pursue purity, to pursue purity and holiness in our lives. I've heard people say, well, I don't want to get off just yet. The joy that we find in forgiveness inspires us to live a life that is pleasing to God. That's pleasing to God. It's not that we cannot do something. It's what we can do that makes us want to change. I've had people, I've, I, right after I came to the Lord, and, and unbeknownst to me, Brother Eastup beat me by two days, same revival. I went to work, and man, I wasn't smoking cigars, and I was trying not to smoke cigars. Actually, to tell you the truth, thank God, I never smoked another one after God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Did I struggle with it? Oh, yes. Yes, but I prayed, and I asked God, and I got over it, and I got past it. But I had guys said, well, you can't do nothing no more. A couple weeks in about a month. You can't do nothing no more. Your church won't let you. I said, I can do anything I want. I choose not to because I want to please God. I'm not trying to tell them that what, well, I am, kind of. I'm not telling them, oh, you're wrong because you're doing this. I'm telling you, I'm not doing it because I want to please God. I'm trying to find in myself that place where I needed to be that I could continually please God with the actions that was in my life. How about God's nature and His spirit? Leviticus 20 and verse 7 says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. For I am the Lord your God. 
If we are to please God, we need to understand His nature. Holiness is an essential part of His nature. God's call, be ye holy, has reverberated throughout the Scriptures and throughout the Bible. Holiness is intertwined with the nature of God. You, 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 have you ever tried to separate? You ever tried to separate some, some vines from, you know, like poison ivy vines from honeysuckle vines? I suggest not be messing with poison ivy. But you ever tried to separate two vines? They don't separate very well, especially if they're all got caught up in four or five of them. You'll end up destroying everything. So you cannot separate holiness from God's character. You cannot do it. People want to say, well, we don't, I don't feel like I need to do that no more. Well, show me where it says it in the Bible, and I'll be glad to drop it off. It's awful quiet in here, and I'm trying not to preach now. You can tell I've been, I've been, out, of the, I've been out of the mix for a while. You cannot separate holiness from God's nature because it is a vital part of it. Everything, now get this, everything that is in His presence must be holy, clean, and righteous. Am I still too loud? I'm all right, okay, because I'm getting wound up. I'm getting wound up. I don't want to do anything. I sit and I just thought about this, this one phrase that I just said. I don't want to do anything that allows something in my life that pushes the Holy Ghost out. I've heard people say, well, God just turned his back on me. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You allowed something to come into you. You welcomed something into your life that suppressed that spirit. See, holiness isn't just going to sit around when there's pornography going on. Holiness isn't going to sit around whenever, whenever uh, cuss words is flying. And, 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 and in, you're screaming, it's Miller time! For you who don't know what that is, that's a commercial they used to have about drinking beer. Just, I, you know, I had to clarify that because I know most of you don't know anything about that. Wow. The, whole, the, the Spirit of God, the holiness, will not stay in a vessel that's full of something that's unclean and unholy. The Spirit of God will only dwell where His holiness is able to thrive. I want God's holiness to be able to thrive in my life. Oh, I'm not perfect, trust me. Trust me, you know, i I got to check myself daily. i gotta keep my, I got to keep this old flesh under check. But, but any time that I feel something, I, I want to try to get a hold of God and say, God, please help me. Every day I pray, God, help me to be a better man today than I was yesterday. Help me to be a better husband than I was yesterday, today than I was yesterday. Grandfather, man of God, I want to be better today than I was tomorrow. I, I'm, not, I'm not perfect, and I'll probably never make it to the level of perfection, but I am going to strive every day to do God's will in my life. And His will is that we would stretch out and reach out for the holiness that He has for us in our lives. That holiness will strengthen us, will move upon us, and will bring into our lives a strength and a power of the Holy Ghost that we have never seen before if we will let that holiness thrive in our lives. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Hang on here. <clears throat> let me get my dignified voice on, <clears throat> if I can find it someplace. How about His Word? You guys are just, I don't know about you today. Since God is holy, all that belongs to Him is holy. How about His Word? How about His Word? John 1 and 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, Andrew, I'm going to be making reference to a whole bunch of scriptures here you don't have because, don't, don't worry about it. So don't be looking for something to genuinely for God. I'll, I'll tell you when you can pick back up. All right, the, in Hebrews 11, it says the words were framed by the Word of God. All you guys, you sit out back and say, grass be cut. 
I wish I could do that with an acre and a half. Grass be cut, it's done. Uh -uh. But God framed this entire world with his words. With his words. First Kings in the 8th chapter says, His word has never failed. Anybody ever lied to you? Anybody led you astray? Maybe they didn't even mean to lie to you. Maybe they promised you something that just didn't come forward. God's word has never failed and never will. How about in 2 Peter 1, in the first verse says, Holy, they get this now, you see holy, the word holy, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. If you're a holy man of God, you just make sure before you speak, the Holy Ghost has told you. I've had to check myself a few times. One thing I've learned from our pastor, he's out here working one day, and here comes some dude jogging from the back. I said, well, I'm going to find out what he thinks he's doing back there. He ain't supposed to be back there. He gets up there, and pastor starts talking to him about how what a wonderful day it is to be out. He said, yes. Yeah. He started talking to him about the church. Started saying, you ought to come by and visit. Invited him to come to Sunday school. I felt like I ought to go up to the altar and pray. I was going to jump on him because he's running across our property. Pastor invited him to church. Boy, I need to check myself. If I say that I'm a man of God, I need to act like one. If I say I'm filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I need to act like that I am. I need to make sure that, that what comes in, that when it comes out, it's right. You know the old adage, garbage in, garbage out? I need to make sure there's no more garbage coming through. Because the devil would love to shove a bunch of it in there at me. And I need to make sure every day, we need to make sure every day, that what comes into our lives is that of something that is good of God. Now, I don't, I'm not telling you that you can't go have fun. I'm not saying that you can't have fun. I'm not saying you've got to spend every waking hour in prayer. Well, you just search yourself and make that decision for yourself. It's, it's, it's a joke, it's a joke, though. But I will tell you that I need to spend a certain amount of my day in prayer. Every morning we start in prayer before Debbie walks out the door. We, we pray. We pray together that God would touch our church, would touch our home, would touch our finances, would move upon on, on friends and family that are us. We pray for different things before we even walk out the door to start our day. We need to have a daily time in prayer. Everyone does. Everyone needs to have a time that they can commune with God. Talk about having a spirit of prayer. That way, if something comes upon you in a moment's time, you call upon the name of Jesus and not say, you idiot, stay in your own lane. Not that I've ever done that. All right, let's get, hang on here. I've got to get back, back, back on track. All right, so holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Oh, this one tears, this one gets me, gets me. John, in the first chapter, says this, The Word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. You know, the, you know, that Word that dwelt among us was the Word that was in Genesis 1 and 1. That Word that dwelt among us was the Word that's spoken throughout the whole Bible. Do you know that Jesus, the Word, came and was made flesh and dwelt among us? He is the one true God. He is the Word that was reincarnated to show us how we should live. And it goes on to say this in Hebrews in the fourth chapter. Even that flesh was holy and without sin. And without sin. Aren't you glad for His Word that was and that is today holy? It was holy back then and it is holy today. And Jesus, you understand that He dwells in holy places. Uh, Isaiah 57 and 15, you don't have this one. For thus, saith the high, for thus saith the high places and lofty one, the high and lofty one that <coughs> inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy places. I dwell. Lord, he dwells in the high and the holy places. You don't have this one either, son. Psalms 47 and 8 says, God sitteth upon the throne of His holiness. Everything about God is holy. There is nothing that exists in, around, 
on that is around or any place near God that is not holy. God is holy, and what and wherever He dwells must be holy. Wherever He dwells must be holy. The tabernacle was sanctified, hallowed unto God, but it was His presence between the cherubims in the holy of holies that made the tabernacle holy. It wasn't man's own job. It wasn't what Moses and all of the high priests did that made that place holy. It was the presence of God when it moved in to the holy of holies in between there, in between the cherubims. That's what made it holy. In David's day, Zion was the dwelling place of the ark of the covenant. It was called the mountain of his holiness. When Solomon's temple was completed. The glory of the Lord filled the house. His spirit took residence there. God's dwelling is always a holy place. Is always a holy place. Let me check the time. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right, the church today, the church, you, as you're sitting here, it's not this building. It's you. You are the church. The church is God's masterpiece of mercy. I can testify to that. Aren't you glad for the mercies of God? Aren't you glad that we're not living under the dispensation of the law, but we're living under the dispensation of mercy, of the fact that God can show us mercy when we make a mistake, when we do something wrong? None of us would be able to live under the law. The word church was first mentioned in Matthew 16, 18, when Jesus said, I will build my church. The church began when the Holy Ghost was poured out in Jerusalem. When men and women received the Holy Ghost, the church is the dwelling place of His Holy Spirit. It's not this building, though we should keep this building we should treat it reverently. Okay? We should treat it reverently. That's why I grab my grandkids and say, stop running. That's why we ask nobody to be bringing nothing in here but bottled water. We need to treat this room, this building reverently. Why? Because when the church gathers together in this building, we bring down the Shekinah glory of God when we worship Him, when we lift praises unto Him. All right. <coughs> it is us, we are the church, and we are the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's important for us to seek out holiness. That's why it's important for us to search out where God wants us to be. I heard somebody say, well, you finally arrived. I said, what? He said, well, talking about my position here at church, I said, you're kidding me, I've not arrived nowhere. I've not arrived nowhere. What are you talking about? It's no time for me to sit back on my haunches and say, well, bless God, I got it made. Because I don't have it made. Nobody that sits back and says, well, okay, just entertain me. We need to lay hands on you and pray that spirit out of you is what we need to do. Because it doesn't matter how old you are, what position you have, God wants you to Continue to move towards holiness. He does not want you to be satisfied with what's the status quo at the time. He doesn't want you to be satisfied with what the world thinks that you ought to be in or what position that, that you're in. Well, you know, he's a holy man of God. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. No, we have to continue to fight daily this flesh. We have to continue to search out our own salvation with fear and trembling. There's no reason at all why we should ever think just because I've had the Holy Ghost for 40-something, 50-something years, that I can sit back and not worry about it no more. The devil's still after you. The devil still wants to take you and sift you. The devil still wants to take you down and destroy your soul and laugh at you. There's no time for anyone to think that I've arrived. 
The only place we've arrived is at is today, and we have to fight for tomorrow. Because there's loved ones and there's friends and family that we know that are not saved, that are out of the ark of safety. And we need to shine the light of holiness so bright that they can see it from a far, far distance. All right. Hang on here. Let me get myself collected again. All right. A godly person in the midst of an ungodly world can show the light of truth for all to see. Somebody might say, well, Brother Lucas, you just said just a minute ago that we ought to be, you know, we need to be separate. Yeah, we do. You need to separate yourself from sin. Separate yourself from, from, from the things that are oppressed the spirit. That don't mean that we're going to build a great big wall around this building and sell tickets for people to look into a window to see our holiness. In our everyday walk, we need to go out and show what the holiness of God is. People ought to say, now that person over there, they're different. They're different. They go to church. That person over there, they actually live what they say. Every day, every day, we need to ask God, put someone on our heart. Lord, help me today to talk to someone, to lead someone to you. So separation means to separate us from the sin and all of the wrongdoings of this world. It is our responsibility to preserve the truth of the Scriptures. God will have a church who will preserve the truth of holiness for the next generation and to share it with all of those that are around them. Now understand that my grandchildren are fifth generation Pentecost in this church. That's impressive, isn't it? Not really. Not really when you think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that they are fifth generation. I'm so happy that, that my children are living and serving God. But if they were to give up and compromise the holiness, the other four generations mean nothing. It means nothing if we turn away from what God has for us. It means nothing if we say, well, we'll let this go. We don't have to worry about it holiness standards we don't have to worry about uh, about that you know we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll let this go and and just this one thing no i'm sorry i've seen people who let go one thing before you know it there's they have got nothing they stand for nothing we need to hold on to the to, to the truth and not sell it not not give anything up I, i'm not giving nothing up I'm not going to give my holiness standards up. I'm not going to give up what we believe, that, that there is one God and one God only. I'm not going to give up the truth of baptism in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I'm not going to give that up. And I'm not going to give anything else up that we teach from this pulpit, no matter what the government says. I may one day end up in jail, but that's just too bad. I refuse to give up anything that God has passed down to me. I'm not going to give up anything that's in between them two leather covers. Nothing. Because someone has to stand for the next generation and not compromise the faith and not compromise the truth of God. Matthew 5 and 14 says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set up on a hill that cannot be hid. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where we was traveling through the mountains several years ago. Time is it? We was traveling through the mountains several years ago. There's a storm, man. It was a storm like I had never seen. Water was rushing down the side of the mountains, going across the road and down the mountain. We was up in this mountain, and I said, I said, well, we better stop and get us a place as soon as we can. Of course, my wife is horrified of storms. She's ready to pack up everybody that's breathing in our house at the first sign of one and head for the basement and wait till it's all over. Me, I have to stand up there and look at it. She thinks I'm crazy, but I'm just not afraid of them. I'm weary of them, but I'm not afraid of them. So we're traveling through the mountain, and she's, she's over having a prayer meeting, and uh, I'm just trying to drive. We finally get someplace. I go in and ask if I can get her. She said, you got a reservation? I said, no. We're in Flagstaff, Arizona. And, and, you know, as we was driving through the mountain, we could see light from the city of Flagstaff, but we couldn't see Flagstaff. There was evidence that there was light. Well, they ended up telling us that they was filming a Western movie, and 
There wasn't no. They, all their rooms were booked. I said, well, how about any other, other hotel? He goes, you can forget it. You might as well go to Phoenix. I said, well, that's where we was going anyway. So, so we drove on down the mountain. But see, there was evidence that there was a city there in the mountains because we could see the light that was reflecting around up, up, up around the top of the mountains and around, around the curve. We could see that there was some light someplace. There was something ahead. And we, we got, got a, for a moment, we had a nice breath of, of relaxation that we'd found the city. Understand, we must be that city in this world today. In this world of total darkness, and it is getting, you can't, I'm going to say it's getting darker every day. You say, well, how in the world could it be darker than total darkness? Get, well, get in total darkness, you'll find out. <laughs> in, this, in this world where it just seems like nothing is right, that, 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 that ungodliness is the norm. We need to shine brighter than we ever have before. We need to shine the light of truth more than we ever have before. The light of Jesus Christ within us must be evident in our lives for the world to see. God wants a church comprised of men and women who demonstrate holiness in every facet of their lives. In our attitudes, in our conversation. In our appearance, we must, we must be holy. We must be holy. Now, I'm not going to jump on a whole bunch of standards, but all you got to do is take a look at what walks down the street and say, I better not be dressing like that. Now, come on, folks. You all been, you've all been out. You've been downtown. If you haven't been downtown, and while I go downtown in the evening, you'll realize real quick, that's not the holiness standard that I live by. And that's all I'm going to say about that right now but God wants us to demonstrate holiness in every facet of our lives we shouldn't make a decision without praying and asking God to help us make it I know you're gonna say brother Luke you need to be making that over in marriage class well I probably do and I probably will if they ever give me a chance to teach again but understand we need to show this world what the holiness of God is, what it can do and what it can change in our lives. Do you know? Do you know that God changed me? I, I, I wasn't anything wonderful when I first came to God. When God filled me with the Holy Ghost, He changed a little bit. He changed a few things in me. He couldn't let me just be like I was. I needed to change some things. I needed to let the holiness of God and, it, engulf my life and start changing and pushing things out that wasn't of Him. See, there's a difference in pushing things out that's not of God and letting things come in that are not of God to push the Spirit of God out of our lives. There's a difference. There's a difference. And, I, and we need every day, every day, ask God. All right, first, uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, starting at uh, uh, the 6th chapter, uh, verses 17 and 18. Uh, they'll have it there in a minute. It says, Wherefore, come out of among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, this is verse uh, chapter 7 and 1, having therefore these promises, <coughs> dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. There is evil spirits out there today. And if we're not careful, we can invite them in. That's why we have to check ourselves. That's why that we have to every day, every day pray and ask God to strengthen us to make us stronger and better than we was yesterday. Because the world... And the devil, he's getting stronger. He's getting crazier. He's doing more and more. He's doing things today that we would never have. Would you ever dream that in Indiana we'd have gay marriage? You see, this is going on the web, so I'll probably be in trouble. But that's all right. But it is true today. It is true today. We have to stand for what's right. Every part of it. You say, Brother Lucas, but people say that, say that, say that we're that we're bigoted or that, or, or that we're haters. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. 
We just don't like sin. We can hate sin all we want. And we can pray that God can deliver those that are in any type of sin that the Bible points out. Listen, if the Bible points it out, it's wrong. And it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what a judge says. It doesn't even matter what we think. It matters what the Word of God says, and do we line up to the Word of God? And if we are pursuing holiness in our lives, and we want the holiness of God to live within us, we must pursue that which is in the Word of God and stand on that Word no matter what the world says. Because one day I'm going to walk and dance on streets of gold. I couldn't dance when I was in the world, but I'm going to do something crazy up there you think I'm going to fight this whole 50-something, 60, whatever, however long I get to live? You think I'm going to fight this whole long and not have me a personal party when I get there? Lord knows why I'm going to cut a rug or something. I don't know, but I'm going to do something. But I'm going to find myself at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to find myself someplace when I get to heaven at the feet of Jesus. I don't know what I'll say. I don't know what I'll ask, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to find myself there. Oh, that's all I'm, that, that, that's why I'm living this life, so that I can go to heaven. That's why I'm striving to do better every day, because I realize within my own self that I cannot make it on my own. I can't make it to heaven on my own. Lord knows there's heaven. Lord knows I can't. But with his help and me searching after what God has for me, I'm going to make heaven my home. I'm going to make heaven my home. Paul stated to the children of God that children of God must, one, Come out from among the world. Be separate from the world. Touch not that which is unclean and cleanse ourselves. We can do some things for ourselves. We can sit with the Word and we can search the Word and we can pray the Word and we can pray and ask God every day, cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind. Lord, help me. I sit there last night before I went to bed. I said, Lord, let me dream something wonderful tonight. Huh, don't let me dream something weird. Some go- I, I, I dreamed some of the goofiest dreams the other night. It wasn't nothing bad. It was just cotton-picking goofy. I'm going, what, what was that all about? But I wanted to dream of something good. I wanted to dream of something holy. I wanted the Word to just be in my mind to where what I would have in my, in my dream state would be something that would approve and be there and be what God would have me to be and to live. Yes, we need to come out from among the world spiritually and physically and gain strength spiritually so that when we do have to go into the world on a daily basis that we are still a separate people spiritually and holy wise. And we do not, just because we're in the world and we go into the world on a daily basis, it does not mean that we have to touch unclean things. It does not mean that, well, I'm... Not in church today, so uh, give me that playboy. Let me see that bad boy. Y'all getting awful quiet. Yeah, I'm taking it to the extreme. But understand this. Just this, this walk with God and this life of holiness is not Sunday and Wednesday. It's not Sunday and Wednesday. We get a feel-good feeling. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa and walk out the door, and tomorrow nobody knows you even know what the Holy Ghost is. That stuff's got to stop. This is the day in which we live that God could split them clouds at any minute, and we need to be about the Word of God. We need to be about saving people's souls. We need to be about living the life that God expects us to live. I'm going to go back and sit in my seat. But we need to do that because it is an imperative for our own salvation and the salvation of everyone that we come in contact with, that they see the holiness of God in our lives today. All right, I got to sit down. I told you I'd get wound up if I stand up. All right, a holy heart will manifest holy actions. Well, that's profound, isn't it? I read it someplace. <laughs> I read it someplace. But it's true. God is holy. He has always been holy. His total being is rooted in His holiness. His spirit, His word, His dwelling place, and His name are holy. We have been called out 
of the darkness of sin that's in this world into the marvelous holy light of God. And you know what? I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine what was in my mind as a teenager to look and say, guess what? I think the world's got something better for me than the church does. I was just stupid. I was stupid. And I allowed, I'm going to tell you what it was. When I backslid as a teenager, I allowed something to get into my life that not only suppressed the Spirit, but chased it out of my life. And when I did that, I found myself in a sinful state, a backslidden state, and ran from God for more, for many years probably because of shame more than anything else. Never forget the time I met Debbie's family, or parts of the family. There's so many of them, you can't get them all together at one time. One of them said, well, what kind of religion are you? I said, well, with a stogie in my mouth, that's a cigar if you don't know. I said, um, I was raised Pentecost, apostolic Pentecost, but... Uh, I, I'm not. Man, that was some... That, I am not living that way now. Well, them words almost didn't want to roll off my tongue. Those words just didn't want to roll off my tongue. You know, the scripture says, raise, uh, raise your child up in the way she go, and when it grows old, it will not depart. That, that word will be with them. If you have children out of the ark of safety, that, and they've been in, they've been in them, that word's with them still, it was with me. It was with me. I don't know what I was thinking about. I was just, like I said, I was just stupid. But we have to call out. I mean, we've been called out of the darkness of sin into God's marvelous light. The Holy Ghost lives in us, the church. You're the church, not the building. You're the church. We call this a church, but you're the church. It lives in the church. He has called us to be holy, and are reflected. Holiness is reflected in His nature and should be reflected in ours. We say that we are saved, that we are baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Holiness should be reflected in our lives. Understand, because God loved us first, we should desire to put Him first, in everything that we think and that we do. Our outward appearance should reflect our inward purity. We'll say that again. Our outward appearance should reflect our inward purity. If God lives in us, it should be plain on the outside of us. It should be plain on the outside of us. Hebrews 12 and 14, and we're just about done. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man, no man shall see the Lord. As we are trying to live in God's character, holiness is expressed in our pursuit of peace with all people. Brother Seagraves said that in one of his commentaries, and I'll repeat that again. As we are trying to live in God's character, holiness is expressed in our pursuit of peace with all people. We need to have peace with all people. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter how, how, how crude they are. Uh, there was a guy that me and Brother Mike used to work with, I partnered with him for a little while, and um, man, you didn't even say anything about about church to him. He'd go crazy. He threatened her. He threatened because if I seen somebody write praise Jesus on something, I'd go lock him up. And I came back to church, and man, he rode me like a tired dog. But I just kept my mouth shut. And I talked to him. I said, Mike, I said you've got to believe in God. No, I don't. He's a pervert. I said, you better watch what you say. You better watch what you say. I said, just because you had a bad experience 
doesn't mean that God does not still love you and that God is not alive. And I tried my best to live right in front of him. And he finally eased up, but I could never get him to come to church. That breaks my heart. But I am still going to pursue peace with all people. Doesn't matter what they think. Doesn't matter what position that they've taken. I'm not going to compromise my beliefs. I'm not going to compromise anything that God has given me. I'm going to live as holy as I can, every day that I can, as long as I have breath. We demonstrate holiness because, because we understand. We understand that without holiness, we will not make it to heaven. Every day of our lives, we should pursue holiness. We should, my mouth is dry as a bone. We should pursue holiness in a way that when we get it, understand, there's something amazing about God. The closer that we get to God, the closer that we want to be with God. And that's how it is with me. But I will tell you this, that if we draw in what God has, do you know that when you give it up, to someone else, it, you don't really notice that it's gone. It will replicate itself. The more that you testify, the more that you share the love of God and the holiness of God with other people, God will respond and fill you back up. To fill you back up. You will never find yourself in a position where you have lost what you have given to someone else, what you have witnessed to someone else. Your life, thank you, your life is a witness today. One way or the other. You're either a witness for the prosecution or you're a witness for the defense. You can pick out which side you like and which side you don't like, but you better like God's side. And you better be a witness for Jesus Christ every day that you live and breathe. And hang on to the holiness that God has given us and make it in your life one thing that you will never give up and never compromise the truth. The Bible says to Buy the truth, and sell it not, and sell it not. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for your listening. And let's.